In this video, we're going to talk about limits at infinity. What a limit at infinity is, is what happens when we're given a function, say like what we have 1 over x times cosine of 1 over x, we're evaluating this function as x approaches infinity. That's what this topic of a limit at infinity really means. Now, when we originally look at the function that we're given here, we have a whole lot of a mess going on here. Just 1 over x times cosine of 1 over x, it doesn't look as nice as what we're used to dealing with, right? So the problem that we actually have been given actually kind of prompts us in a certain way to use substitution in a way. So we're gonna walk through the steps of substitution that the question also guides us through, and then we're gonna evaluate the limit using that. So what the question tells us to do is it says first, let t, just some other variable, in this case we choose t, equal one over x. And we note that as x approaches infinity, meaning that inside of t here, this 1 over x, this x in the denominator is approaching infinity. So our denominator of our fraction is growing infinitely larger, meaning that this t, that 1 over that thing growing infinitely larger, is getting smaller and smaller. So as x approaches infinity, t approaches 0 from the right. And we specify from the right because x is growing towards positive infinity, right? So it's getting larger and larger and larger in terms of positive numbers. So this t, this fraction 1 over x, is still going to be a positive fraction. But we're going to grow towards 0 as our denominator gets larger and larger. Okay? So we're going to use this little information that we just got here to rewrite this, this original limit that we were asked to solve. So we're going to come down here and we can rewrite the original limit that we have, which is this, this, and this. And actually in this question, it's already translated for us, but I wanted to take some time to kind of explain why it gets translated the way it does. T approaches zero from the right, T cosine of T. Okay. So we let t equal 1 over x, right? So anywhere we saw 1 over x in our original function, we went ahead and replaced it with t, okay? That's fairly straightforward. But now this t approaches 0 from the right is actually what we found right here. We said that t approaches 0 from the right as x approaches infinity. So since we were rewriting all of this in terms of t, we also had to rewrite what our variable in question was actually approaching. And it took a little bit of a double substitution there. So now that we have that going on, we're going to take a little another kind of aside here and talk about the product law for limits. Now, what the product law for limits tells us is that as long as we have two functions, which we have here, we have t is a function by itself and cosine of t is another function. So we have two functions that are defined for all, for everything not equal to the thing we're evaluating at or coming towards here over some interval containing this. Then what we can do is we can evaluate these limits separately. And then whenever we find the limits of those respective things, we can multiply those together to get our limit of our original function here. In this case, the translated slash substituted version of what we originally had. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down this big limit that we have here into two smaller limits where we evaluate each of the components. So we're first going to evaluate this and then we're going to evaluate that. Okay, so all we did right here was we used PLL, which was product law for limits. All we did here, did a little substitution. Okay, so now let's evaluate the limit of t as t approaches zero from the right. So that kind of goes without saying that this is really just approaching zero. As t approaches zero from the right, the limit of t is zero, right? We can all agree there. But let's look at the limit of cosine of t as t approaches zero from the right. If we remember the basic shape of the cosine function, we know that sine starts at the origin and cosine 
starts at one here on its curvature, right? And it kind of follows this pattern and it goes this way. Pardon my horrible drawing though, it's kind of a rough sketch. But we know that as t approaches zero from the right, we're gonna be approaching one or our cosine value of that t approaching zero is gonna be approaching one. So the limit of cosine of t as t approaches zero from the right is one. So this zero is the limit of t as t approaches zero from the right, and one is the limit of cosine of t as t approaches zero from the right. Now, following the product law that we stated, we simply multiply those two limits together. Zero times one is zero. So the limit of our original function here, which also was written as this, also written as these components, is simply zero.